sincere pride, Pathé Gazette presents this film record of one of the most important personal encounters in history. The mighty battleship Prince of Wales heads out to sea, carrying the Prime Minister to a rendezvous with the President of the United States. With Mr. Churchill is Lord Beaverbrook, Minister of Supply. The Prime Minister is interested in everything in the ship and takes part in a conference in the Admiral's quarters. Among those present are the First Sea Lord, the Chief of the Imperial General Staff and the Vice Chief of Air Staff. Anchors are lowered at the appointed place and lying not very far off are the United States cruiser Augusta with Mr. Roosevelt aboard and an accompanying destroyer. With no loss of time, Mr. Churchill, with Lord Beaverbrook, sets out to greet the President aboard the American ship. It is to be a simple meeting of political heads of two greatest democracies. Not a pompous affair like the meetings of Hitler and his lackey Mussolini at the Brenner Pass. you will see history in the making. A British Prime Minister meeting an American President aboard a United States ship in the Atlantic. As Mr. Churchill steps aboard, he is welcomed by officers of the American Navy and the national anthem we all love so well. On meeting Mr. Roosevelt, Mr. Churchill's first act is to hand him a letter from the king. Back aboard the Prince of Wales, sailors of both navies are busy with hundreds of tuck boxes. A present from the president himself to every man in the ship's company. Cigarettes, cheese, biscuits, a peach, an apple, and yes, a real banana. From the Augusta, President Roosevelt comes to return Mr. Churchill's call and continue the conversations they had already had at their earlier meeting. Conversations, the results of which are to ring round the world as a clarion call to all free and oppressed peoples and as a death knell to aggressors. Mr. Roosevelt steps aboard the Prince of Wales, he is greeted with that grand old tune, the Star Spangled Banner. Hello. This meeting between Mr. Winston Churchill and Mr. Franklin D. Roosevelt brings home forcefully to us how these two powerful personalities are by the will of their respective countrymen invested with a decisive part in the molding of human destiny. The shape of things to come is in their hands. In the course of their conferences, President and Prime Minister drew up a declaration of the joint peace aims of Great Britain and the United States, the main points of which are that all men shall be enabled to live in freedom from fear and want, and that aggressor nations shall be disarmed. Um, uh, Follows divine service, Christ. bringing a special significance to the words of God. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill are obviously much impressed. To use the President's words, one of the world's greatest services, for it emphasizes the right of all people to freedom of thought and worship, rights of which depressed peoples have been robbed.
We are now privileged to hear commands given by a British naval officer Tender. and obeyed by men of two navies at the same time. Jason Perry, officers will turn about. Remainder, turn forward. Ship companies, about. Right and left, turn. March off the chips and Perry, officers. The sailors enjoy the chance of a yarn together before they part. Now it's goodbye or au revoir, who can tell? The lads of the United States Navy are loath to go, and our own boys in blue are loath to see them go. It's been a grand time, but now Jack Ty is going back to that other job of wiping Hitler and what's left of Musso from the seas. The ship's cat, Whiskey, insists on attracting Mr. Churchill's attention as he waits for the departing president's destroyer to get underway. So ends one of the most historic meetings it has ever been our privilege to portray. Its full significance will be learned by our enemies in due course.